Okay, and day two, I've got uh, a I've got a couple lights set up here, and I uh, found an old uh, photogenic power pack that came to this set. These are all old Olin Mill stuff. Um, you guys may remember it if you shot back in the day. Um, this is the Model AA Flashmaster. And uh, it's a pretty nice little unit. We're going to see if it works. It hasn't been fired up for seven years. So, yeah, you'll see, see it when I do. So, here we go. I'm going to turn the camera on first. Go ahead and uh, get this little monitor on here just for fun. I've got some cables here um, that, that actually... And again, I never really set these up. When I was a photographer, I just sort of showed up in the camera room was there. When I was in road division, I had um, a Nord, so that was a completely different thing, and that was also 40 years ago, so I don't remember a lot about setting that one up either. But what I'm gonna do here is first I'm gonna test the power supply and see if it works. So it's got this nice big long cord on it. And I'm gonna plug it on this power strip over here on the wall. came with, I just about stepped on them, but it came with modeling lamps, which go inside of here and inside of here. I'll show you this in a sec. You can do a more detailed look at the flashes. Let's see if it works. And honestly, I haven't tried this at all, so I have no idea what's going to happen. We've got, on this one, it looks like one was on, let's see, it's a, Let's turn it on first, see if we get a power light. Oh, that's a good sign. Model and lights, good deal. All right, so that's one end of it. Okay, we'll see what happens when we find the, see if we can find the cables to, for the triggers for these, and we'll go from there. Okay, after doing a little digging in the box here, I found, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, all kinds of cool things. Some, uh, looks like like Cat5 or phone cable to quarter inch plug adapter. Not exactly sure what that's for, maybe one something else I'll find along the way. But I found a couple of these. Um, these are plug in, looks like they plug into the photogenic trigger and convert it to, you can have two of these, uh, plugged into the camera. I'm not sure why there's two, but you know, we'll find out. So I'm going to try plugging one of these in. Looks like it goes like so. It's kind of dangerous just flopping around over there. <laughs> anyway, All right, so see that? That should uh, give us some uh, a place to plug into, anyway. And I'll hold on to this one just for now. Maybe if you had two different cameras, maybe you could use the same power pack. I'm not sure what, why there's two of them here. Oh, they're plugged in. I felt like that clicked. There's a place in the front of the camera that says strobe. And I'm going to plug that into there. This looks like this one might not be. Table doesn't feel good. It doesn't seem like it wants to lock into that strobe. So, I guess this one's as good as any. Alright, we'll leave it there for a second just see what happens. Alright. Doesn't feel like it's snapped in there good. I did see the flash go off when I can see if it flashes when I hey I believe that worked. Can I see the flash? Let's see. Ooh, boy, okay. Didn't show that one enough. Okay. 
looks like we have a fully functional Olin Mills studio right here. All it needs is a backlight and uh, that can be plugged in to these. This has four, enough for four lights so you could do a, a backlight, a hair light if you wanted to. And uh, looks like we're in business. All we need to do now is to figure out the film situation and hopefully we can uh, either find um, the film that came with it, they don't make it anymore. This is a Portra 160, and I think Kodak, I may be wrong, but I think Kodak just went to 400 on it, which different ISO, but the same film, and not super important. We could probably even run black and white through here if we wanted to. We just have to make sure the settings are set right. Um, don't have a slate, so I'd have to just use a regular old gray card. That's okay. Um, yeah, so looks like we got to show us the system here. Take one more picture, and we're gone. Let me do a little more detailed stuff on the actual um, flash system. For those of you who haven't seen this, if you're an old mill photographer, you know this thing better than I do, but uh, it's been a long time. This is a, a photogenic. I've got it upside down for you, but let's try it this way. There you go. But um, this is a photogenic um, power supply, and looks like for the Ola Mills camera, it uses uh, a, either a Cat5 or a, it looks like a Cat5 to me. Uh, I can confirm that later, but uh, I'll put it up on the screen. The uh, has this adapter that adapts the two two Cat5 cables to the trigger, um, basically input for it. So has the four prongs on it so you've got um, <clears throat> you, you got enough inputs for four lights you could have a you know main fill hair light and backlight you have a fuse for the modeling lamps that um, you have a um, these things we have a few of these these spares um, but uh, I can't think of what these are called. I figured it out. And uh, yeah, we got the charge indicator. So when you turn these on, you can turn on the modeling lamps, um, turn on the whole unit, and they come on with the modeling lamps. And um, you turn your modeling lamps off if you want to. That's just modeling lamps uh, don't do anything for your exposure they're just there to to help you kind of see what the light's doing and kind of see where the shadows are falling and that kind of thing so, so yeah so anyway we've got these plugged in um i don't see a remote like a manual trigger on this some of these power packs have have that i mean not these power packs but power packs i've used so i don't see that on here but we can fire it with the camera um, it seems to be working really well. Um, when I got this this stuff, there was all kinds of things that um, I got with it, which is kind of cool. A bunch of cables. I mean, this is the remote for the camera. Put that up there. So I'm confusing. Got a few extra cables. These are um, the stand cables, I believe, for the for the um, camera itself. These are power pack cables. I have another one of these power packs here. So some more cables for that. We've got another Cat5 cable for firing off the triggers. Another Cat5 cable. And then another Cat5 cable. We've got plenty of Cat5 cables. And um, here's another Cat5 cable. So then there's these these cables here, which I'm going to have to find out more information about these, but what they were for. But they, um, they got a quarter inch plug, like a guitar plug on one end, and a Cat5 on the other. So, and I'm assuming these are Cat5 because they're probably of the, well, I guess I could just read the side here and see what it's like. Yep, Cat5E. That's so a Cat5E cable. Not sure if you can see that or not, but yeah. Okay, so anyway, um, Datamax cable. Okay, so there's a few little fuses strapped to the top of this here. That was kind of handy. Down here in the box, I've got a few spare trigger um, 
these um, Cat5 to sync cord converters, whatever you want to call them. A couple of those. Um, uh, one of those. It looks like a candle, actually. So I'm not sure that that is. <laughs> uh, and uh, another one of those. One of those. Another one of these. So I'm guessing that these uh, these cables must have connected to a different power supply, and you had the option of either plugging this into the camera or into the power supply and converting it to Cat5, or you went straight out of the sync cable and converted it for the photogenic. So maybe a different. I think I got a couple extra power supplies, so they may go with that. So I don't know. Then in the bottom, and this is really cool, I've got like all kinds of strobes. These are bubble wrap. These things right here. These uh, these are venerable light stands. If you've worked at Olin Mills in the last 40 years, you've probably seen these things. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the history of who built them, whether we built these or, or they were uh, built by somebody else, but... Maybe I can find out about that. Um, it has a release lock here. The ones I used to use had these big metal, um, kind of like, I've got some more stuff over here. Kind of like this, only bigger, much bigger, with this kind of reflector. And then um, on top of that, you clamped um, translucent paper or... Um, like a, I think they called them filters. I don't remember, but they uh, they get clamped onto the to the outside to diffuse the light. So when when the flash goes, it's not so harsh. Um, this one came with a couple of umbrellas. So maybe there's uh, maybe there's some umbrellas um, around here that fit that would work for this if you really wanted to use it. So, but you have uh, your modeling set up here you have your flood you can flood it or you can make it modeling more um, like what the light's going to do when it hits the subject so but yeah uh pretty cool stuff so i got all kinds of good stuff here i got some extra cables some, uh, this is for an umbrella stand i would assume you put your umbrella in, in this part here and uh, mount this to a stand or something so anyway that's pretty neat all kinds of good adapters and such. And uh, even got a take up reel or two, a little extra one. I think there's one in each camera already, but so I got an extra one of these, so that's neat. So yeah, we're gonna try to get these things fired up and actually do some, um, you know, do some real photography with them and see what that looks like. So it's it's been a while, so thanks for watching. We'll keep you posted.